the death size. We all go a little mad sometimes. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? You're gonna need a bigger boat. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I'll play again. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Killer, I'm just gonna bash you. What's blood for? If not for shame. Welcome to 31 Days of Horror Movies 2021. Uh, I'm your host, Sam Johnston, and back with me again. We got Adam. I'm back. He's yeah, back. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. I keep coming back for you it. You keep coming back. Third time's a charm. Mm-hmm. The movie that we're talking about, we're on October 3rd, and our third movie on this journey that we're going on is, of course, Daughters of Darkness, 1971, mm-hmm. directed by Harry Kummel. While passing through a vacation resort, a newlywed couple encounters a mysterious, strikingly beautiful countess and her aid. I, I was very surprised after the last two movies we watched that were very um, um, reserved as far as romance goes. Uh, this movie was it was it's only eight years later, but it's all kinds of sex, all kinds of, is a lot of soft core. Oh, for sure. And uh, there it's leaning into this stuff in a way that feels like a totally different era. Mm-hmm. of television of uh movies but then at the same time the way um it like jumps head first into every single vampire trope it can is it felt like still kind of old well, i mean let's get into it let's, uh, yeah let's, you... let's go from the beginning let's go from the freaking top <laughs> very cool credits with the red and yeah. the music yeah and the font and the music is like this mostly I mean, we didn't really know at first what it was. Yeah. I think it was uh, either a guitar mm-hmm. or that weird, like, string that thing, thing that he was playing. At yeah. the end. Yeah. They kind of showed that instrument, which I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is either. But it made this weird kind of, like, waning yeah. kind of siren-y yeah. sounds. Um, I can't even do it. I, yeah, that was pretty not, good, actually. You think? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, was pretty close. It. And then we go straight into a sex scene. Oh, right away. Well, first, train. Train. And then sexy. So we're introduced immediately to yeah. Valerie and Stefan mm-hmm. on the train. Stephen. Having sex. Yeah. And um, they have an interesting relationship. Very interesting. Like, very odd. I mean, it's it's sex, and then when they're done, the first thing she's like, uh, "Do you love me?" He's like, "You know," and she's like, "I just want to hear it." And he says, "No," and she's like, "Good," and he's like, "Do you love me?" And she's like, "No," and he's like, "Then we're perfect for each other." And then after that, you find out that they're married. Like, right? Like it, it's super weird relationship. It's super like, like they're they're both denying each other. And and yet obsessed with each other. Yeah. Are they serious? Do they actually love each other? Yeah. Because it, it seems like a relationship that's built on something that's negative already. Mm-hmm. We're starting off with something, uh, a relationship that isn't positive. It's literally, they just set it up as something that's negative. Mm-hmm. And that's where we're starting. Okay, so they, they get to this big ass hotel. It's empty. I mean, they immediately get the yeah, president's the, presidential the suite. Nicest, yeah, the nicest room in the hotel. And they're chilling in there. They're kind of like royalty. And again, it's just like this weird relationship that they have where he's just kind of, he's very controlling of her. Mm-hmm. Very controlling. Mm-hmm. He's literally telling her to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's giving her just like simple commands, but he's like controlling every single thing mm-hmm. that she does down to her reading the newspaper. Yeah. Forcing uh, her to read out loud. And he's and, always dressed in red, too. Yeah. Yeah. In a very, very like intense red. And like, All red. like uh, when he gets out of the shower and he's wearing his like short red bathrobe, his red slippers, like he's always in red and he has she's, his red leather she's coat. always in white. And she's all in white. Yeah. And it's like, and sometimes he's in white as well. And I, this movie is melodrama. This movie is like, like, visual intense it reminds me of like salome in the like intensity of violence and like and also horniness and but then like like color is emotion which is meaning and like like you don't have to understand what they're saying to each other in order to understand what's going on in this movie at all it was interesting because they set up the movie at the first half or maybe even the first 75 percent 
of making him seem like he's the important one. Mm -hmm. All like I wrote down, um, Stefan is the object of all their desires. Valerie, it it's her husband. Mm -hmm. She yearns for him. She wants to please him mm -hmm. as a wife. And then we are introduced to the count countess and her aide, Ilona, and they kind of come in super hot and clearly want something to do with this couple. Mm -hmm. And their focuses seem immediately to him, mm -hmm. especially the countess. Him and the countess kind of connect over this, like weird yeah. bloodlust like yeah, literal bloodlust Actually, like being yeah. turned on by the idea of blood and like torture and stuff there's this like weird moment between him and the countess this is like the first night that they meet her too mm -hmm. and they're like describing torture yeah and they're like rubbing each other yeah yeah and it's very sexual lost in each other it's lost it's in the this feeling. it's this violence plus sex mm -hmm. it's this combination crossover I th in this case it seemed way more like predator hunting prey absolutely yeah. they were they were on the hunt and that's why i think they spent so much time with um with S stefan um for much of it because he was the one in power and had control of valerie who was the actual object of their like desire yeah they need to pull him away from her oh, right, yeah. and, and in order to get her also a very queer movie but like played for monstrosity oh for sure yeah all the women were in love with each other mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. the whole time for elona her journey was always she was jealous mm -hmm. immediately when she saw valerie she became jealous mm -hmm. she knew that the countess would like her she became came jealous she was jealous the whole time i had the thought of like okay did she kind of see that it would get out of hand with stefan and kind of hope that he would Maybe. take care of the situation they saw how violent he was already she knew yeah she already had been talking to valerie about how she could see right through him and mm -hmm. just she she's seen him before you know and they were literally hanging over like like they were literally hunkered on the balcony, looking through the windows, watching him, watching them have sex, watching him beat uh, Valerie. Like they're again watching the whole time. Voyeur, yeah, very voyeur like, very voyeur studying them. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to figure out how to take get them apart. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, he was his own downfall. He ends up causing Alona's death mm -hmm. after they have sex, and then he is like broken. Yeah. He's completely broke, which is kind of odd because this whole time he's obsessed with yes death. He's, super he's like so like engrossed with like blood and all this kind of stuff but when it ultimately happens he becomes this like sunken in kind of just like broken guy do you think that's because um he is human whereas she is not whereas the countess is not and like that's what like like while he has this fantasy of all of that he's still inherently human and when actually faced with it he's like oh my god there's like there's lots of repercussions of this and, and like what have i done oh fuck what did i do and then he had to dig up with his hands which i thought that was interesting they didn't yeah. get a shovel yeah they went to the beach and yeah. he had to dig up her to, grave with his yeah, hands pull it apart threw her in there and on top of him too mm -hmm. <coughs> which mm -hmm. reminded me of their sex scene mm -hmm. which was really strange at one point where she was just kind of like laying on top of him yeah opposite with her with, with her feet. yeah with her head at his feet and then she, they were just kind of like holding hands mm -hmm. and that was it that's yeah, all we it really saw strange but then at the end it's when he's like thrown in the grave with her and then like there's like he's squirming underneath the body um, and the sand falls on top of him. He's just being crushed by that that act, that that having sex with her, that um, betrayal, I guess. Ultimately, how he treats women yeah. is what caused his downfall and mm -hmm. buried him under the sand. Mm -hmm. It was almost like it was so overt that it was okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it made it okay that it was overt because it was so, so 
beautifully stylized to be that overt, like with mm-hmm. all the red and all the um, the countess's outfits were yeah. all very these these like the silver dress, the leather suit, the red dress, yeah, the, 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 the cape, like fur, the cape. They were all animalistic in some sort mm-hmm. of way. Scales, wings, fur, like they all had this sort of like like bestial thing about mm-hmm. to them. And I think that kind of goes back to she is beyond human. Mm-hmm. We get to the end and we don't even need to talk. Stefan dies. Fuck him. Stefan dies. They fucking throw him over the balcony. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who cares about him? He sucks. <laughs> um, yeah. But then there's that car scene. The car scene. Which is faster, faster. Yeah, and faster, it almost, faster. again, it's like this like sexual mm-hmm. like drive, mm-hmm. literally. Right. Sunlight hits them. They start freaking out. Car gets crashed. She flies through the roof, is impaled on a stake, stake through the heart. That kills a vampire. Uh, then the car explodes. Gas gets all over her body. She is then engulfed in flame. Flames kill vampires. It's just like everything. Overkill. Is, overkill. Every, the and, the sun, thing, and the sun is coming. And up. the sun's out. Yeah. The only thing that didn't happen was garlic. Like, I wouldn't have been surprised if just like garlic. A guy with a, <laughs> a garlic, garlic cart. Garlic. Cart garlic. Garlic. Like, <laughs> Oh, Gar- there's a fire. Oh, man, oh, throw it. Throw garlic on it. Throw garlic on it. I promise as well. <laughs> it's like, she's, she's dead. dead. She's dead. She's definitely dead. But then, two years later, or two months later, or whatever, yeah. is she dead? Yeah, because it, that was definitely, obviously, Valerie's body. Mm-hmm. But that voice that was voice. for sure yeah. Elizabeth. It was, a, yeah, the Duchess that kind of implies that there's this the spirit of whatever this entity is lives on mm-hmm. goes through these different people this maybe this entity was actually even around before elizabeth bartor yeah. uh, was even a thing maybe yeah. this is just an evil entity that's always been around since the beginning of time and has just moved through different uh, evil beings yeah yeah and it's beyond just a, a an evil countress right. killing virgins. It's something that's so far back and more original. This movie kind of ends with this idea of the vampire spirit living on and yeah. seducing couples to come, whether it's in Elizabeth or Valerie. Mm-hmm. And the fiddler kind of... I, I kind of got the image of... Um, what's it? Rumpelstiltskin? Yeah. You know, he's like... He like he coaxes out the rats with his music. Is that what he does? I I think that's him. And okay. Or one of the fairy tales is yeah. about like playing the music and it's getting the rats to follow them. Yeah. And kind of like these sirens. And I think that that's mm-hmm. what this movie is about. Is this movie is about seduction. Yeah. This movie is about manipulation and seduction and pulling someone towards you and your desires mm-hmm. for them and. That's what vampires do. This this movie, I feel like, is just kind of a, hmm. it's just kind of this sum up of this is how vampires operate. Mm-hmm. They're sexual. They're violent. The draw that people have with each other, the control, the power dynamics, the the intensity of feeling that people just can't control, whether it's whether it's sexual or you know violent or um, or monstrous and bloodlusty and hunger hunger we yeah. get a lot of it a lot of all throughout yeah this movie yeah sex violence and hunger let's get to the smash pumpkins mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. how do you how are you feeling about mm. the rating of the smash pumpkins mm. i have to admit i'm not a big fan of um visual feeling over like dialogue or over plot i kind of am more of a plot kind of a person um, and so it just like a lot of this movie, I like notice the things and I'm like, okay, I see it. I see the thing, but I'm not feeling as strongly. And I feel kind of silly that I have to feel very strongly about these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might just be me not wanting to engage in, in like feeling my own emotions, which I should more. Uh, but that's for a different session. Yeah, it is for a different <laughs> session. Uh, a different time and place. We'll talk about it. Um, I think it it's very successful at what it does. I think it's, I saw what I wanted to see in a vampire movie, even if it wasn't the way I was expecting to see these things. I thought I saw a little too much sex 
Um, it. it was just a lot of sex. Yeah. Just a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, I thought, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'm gonna go for 3.5 though. 3.5 Smash Pumpkins. I'm glad that we're watching these movies back to back because it kind of puts into context of like the other scores that we made of these other movies too. Yeah. Because the birds got really high scores last year. Very night. high score. And I think that thinking about this movie compared to the last two movies that we watched, it would probably be like the birds, eyes without a face, daughters, daughters of darkness. I'm, with but you it, that. but we're still. I feel like I should still give a score of four ah. Smash Pumpkins oh, to this good. movie because mm-hmm. I love all the visual th- storytelling that they were going for. Mm-hmm. I do agree that it was very over and mm-hmm. very overplayed, um, but it was kind of to me just an homage to things that we love about vampires which That's is the true. sex is the violence it's the blood it's, it's all the, the seduction things. it's all yeah. the vampire things it's yeah. kind of just this homage to a monster yeah. that we all know and and uh seeing like seeing the cape go up was I mean, so satisfying it yeah. was like worth all of the movie to it be was like great. yes vampire that's a vampire i had fun with this one this I was i felt like kind of the the most art housey one. Yeah. And you're right. It was very atmospheric. Mm-hmm. One that we've watched so far. Tomorrow is, I don't know if you'll be back, but tomorrow is the exorcist, oh, ho, um, ho. which is, we're jumping to a whole nother level of scare. Yeah. Cause I think in these first couple, we've gotten the basics, you know, mm-hmm. we've gotten down the, some classics. Mm-hmm. We've gotten, we're understanding where they're trying to play with horror, mm-hmm. but now we're about to take it to like another level. Um, so I hope you'll be back. Uh, I would love to. I know you'll be back. Hey, thank you, Adam, for coming out. Plug yourself, please. Yeah, uh, check out my podcast, Season 3, Episode 4, wherever you can find podcasts. Yeah, it's a great podcast. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. Please check it out. You can find me. (laughs) Yeah, check out my episode. Uh, you can find me at uh, Beep Beep Pretty T on Instagram and check out Playground Social, which is the studio that we're recording this in. And I will see you tomorrow for another horror movie, another 31 days. Let's get more spooky, huh? Ooh, let's let's get, get more spooky. spooky. Whoa. 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 31 days. 31 days of spook. Bye. <laughs>